Hello everyone, welcome back to Not From This World's Daz tutorial series. Really excited to have you join me and today I think I'm going to show you something that can really help you out when it comes to posing clothing or other fabrics. You can also use this for any prop basically, but if you want to run a D4 simulation, using this thing called weight mapping can really help you. And so I'm going to show you a couple examples today about how you can use weight mapping. Now I've got my character, Milica, at the beach again, and she's chilling out at the beach. And we're going to add a couple of things. Uh, we're going to pose some clothing and we're going to create a beach blanket that I want to pose on the back of that chair that you're seeing. So we're going to use weight mapping to do this. Now, the first thing I want to do is I want to create a primitive to make my beach blanket. So I'm going to come up here to the primitive tab. I'm going to select it and I'm going to make a plane that has a hundred divisions. All right. So it's going to be one meter, uh, in size and then it's going to have a hundred divisions. We don't want to choose less divisions in my opinion. You don't want to have like 10 or 20 because then when it simulates it just won't work very well. Remember the amount of divisions you have is going to be the amount of detail you get. Now the more divisions you put into a primitive the harder it's going to be to render, but you'll have a more detailed uh, object. So I'm going to choose 100 divisions. I'm going to hit accept. And you can see I've got my, I've got my um, plane. I'm going to select my plane. And obviously I don't like the uh, white color. So I'm going to go to my surface tab. I'm going to go to base go to base color and we're going to just give this blanket some texture. Give it a nice beach blanket texture. Okay. So now I've got kind of a, a blanket going on. Now our primitive is not deforce enabled. So I'm going to have to deforce enable it before I can do anything with the weight mapping. So I'm going to keep my plane selected. All right, I'm going to come up to edit object, go across, go to geometry, and then go down to where it says add deforce modifier dynamic surface. So I'm going to click on that. And what that does is that creates a deforce enabled primitive. So now my plane if I go back to my parameters tab, you can see that my plane now has a simulation tab. Whenever you see this simulation tab, you know that it is deforce enabled. So if I click on that, it says dynamic surface. Now I want that. I want the dynamic surface. Now, so what I'm going to do with this plane is I'm going to move it and make this blanket drape across that chair. All right, so I'm gonna select my plane. I'm gonna go to my parameters tab and I'm gonna move this plane, All right? And I can rotate it. I'm gonna try and keep this simple for this demonstration, of course, but you want to have it, I'm gonna put it right on the back of this chair. I like it. It's now a dynamic surface, so it's going to do a deforce simulation. But let's watch what happens. I'm going to hit the simulation settings. Um, I'm going to keep my gravity at the default of 1. And I'm just going to hit simulate. I want to make sure that my start bones from memorized pose is off. Because I'm not, I'm not moving my girl. So remember, if this is turned on, the girl will go into her A pose and then she will move with the uh, blanket as she as she poses. We don't need that. We just are posing this blanket. So I'm going to leave this off and I'm just going to hit simulate. Watch what happens. OK, 
Okay, so we got this done and you can see, as soon as I move this over, you can see that it did not pose very well. And this is because, you know, you'd think it would just drape over the chair. It just doesn't do that very well with just D-Force. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna add a weight map to this. I'm gonna clear it and I'm gonna take my plane. We're gonna adjust it. So see right where it is colliding with the chair. You can see it right here, it's colliding with the chair. So I think I'm gonna just adjust it just a little bit. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna add a weight map to this plane. Now to, to make a weight map, it's actually pretty simple. Just make sure your plane is selected. Come over here to create and then scroll down to where it says new DeForce modifier weight node. Click on that and then it's gonna ask you if you wanna name it. And uh, you know, I can name it instead of DeForce, let's just name it blanket. We'll call it blanket modifier weight node. I like to name the things because then when I see it in my scene tab, I remember what I was doing. So I'm gonna select it. Now, if you look in the scene tab, our plane now has this new tab called blanket modifier weight node. So now we can create a weight node. We're gonna uh, select that. So don't select the plane, select this blanket modifier weight node that you just created. Come over to the Tools tab, click on the Tools tab, and go down to where it says Weight Node Map Brush. Um, sometimes you'll find it up here. I don't have it up here. I just have it under Tools. And then select this Weight uh, Map Brush. When I select it, you'll see that nothing really happens and I have to go to my tool settings. Now I have my tool settings as a uh, tab right here. If you don't have the tool settings on your, on your tabs, just go to Window, Panes, and then scroll down to where it says Tool Settings, and then you can select it, and then you'll have it right there. You can also take that and move it, make it a tab if you want to. So what we're gonna do within this node weight map brush tool setting is I'm gonna hit add map. So with my blanket modifier weight node selected, I'm gonna hit add map. And you can see it changed the color of our blanket. So now our blanket's kind of this pinkish red color. Now to help us out, I'm gonna go into the lit wireframe and you can really see how red it is with this lit wireframe. So what this did is it added a weight map to our plane. And our plane is now um, selected for all of it to move during our simulation. What we wanna do is we wanna freeze an area of our blanket so it doesn't move. It's pinned, it's locked into place. Now to do this, um, what we have to do is we have to go up to this and uh, we have to just make sure that this paintbrush is selected. And see, you kinda of get this little target on your blanket See how it disappears when I get off my blanket, but it's kind of got a, a green circle surrounded by a red circle. Now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna move this blanket up. I'm gonna hit my plane. I'm gonna move my blanket up just a little bit. I'm gonna go back to that blanket modifier. And I needed to do that because I wanna freeze right where it's gonna collide with that chair. And how I'm going to do this is I'm going to hit alt and then just click my mouse 
And as I do that, you're going to notice that the red color is disappearing and it's turning blue and green and then it'll eventually get gray. What this is doing is it's freezing. I kind of like it because red is hot and not frozen. It's going to move. The blue and green is frozen. So if I select Alt and just click on that area, what it did is it froze that area. So this blue and greenish area will not move with the deforce now. All right. And so if I don't like it, just don't hold down Alt and just click your mouse and watch, you'll erase it. So now it's all back to being red again. So I hit Alt and I can change the weight of this object. See, it's turning blue. And if I keep holding it, it'll get more and more and more blue and see how it's turning green. What I'm doing is I'm freezing that area. That area will not move when I run a D4 simulation. This is what's so cool about the weight maps. Now, I don't hit Alt on my keyboard, and I just click, and I can erase that because I don't want it frozen right where I was showing you. So we're going to delete this. We're going to get this back to solid red. All right, so I'm just clicking my mouse, and I'm going over this area until it's red again. Pretty cool how this works. Okay, so let's go back to this area. This is where I want it frozen. I'm going to hit Alt, and I'm just going to click as I hold down Alt, and I'm going to make this area frozen. So now I've got this frozen area of my blanket. I'm going to go back to texture mode, and you can see that you can use this in texture mode too. You can see my blue, um, blue area. That's where it's going to be frozen. The rest of this blanket's going to move, and that blue area is not. So if I go back to my simulation settings and I hit simulate, let's watch what happens. So now you can see that my blanket is frozen in place. Pretty cool how this works. Now, you know, it's not perfect. I could mess with it some more. Um, if you don't like how your DeForce worked, you can stop it any time you want, and it'll just freeze your simulation. So we're going to simulate it one more time, and then I'm going to have my cursor on the cancel button so as soon as that blanket kind of gets onto the sand I'm gonna hit cancel and it'll freeze our blanket to that one spot you can also use the timeline and I haven't shown how to use the timeline yet but the timeline's kind of a hassle it is cool but you don't need the timeline necessarily for most of what you're gonna render so see, I can take it maybe right about there. I'm going to just hit cancel. And see, now it's, it's stuck in that position. So the modifier has really helped us pose this. So now I can get my girl back. And it looks like that blanket's kind of hanging on the chair pretty cool actually now the second thing I want to do is I want to pose her clothing and so she's got this bikini on but if you look at our sign it says that clothing is optional and Milika is a free spirit so she went to this beach for a reason and so we're gonna take her top off and have her hold it in her hand. Now, in order to do this, I'm going to repose her a little bit. So right now, I'm still in this node weight 
uh, map brush. So I have to click off of it. See, I, I can't do anything um, because it's affecting only the blanket. So what I have to do is I have to go back to my node selection tool or whatever preferred tool that you use. I'm going to select that. Now I can get back in and I can change her. So I'm going to I'm going to repose her a little bit um, to keep YouTube happy and to make her hold this. I'm going to raise move her arm. So she's going to be holding her top. So let's bend this a little bit. We're just going to twist it. Okay, that's not bad. And then we're going to keep her discreet. So I'm going to move her other arm to cover her. So I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to click on her pectorals. We're going to lower them a little bit. And you know, posing is probably the one thing that takes the, the most time when we are rendering. Now, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna add a weight map to her bikini top. And we're gonna move the bikini top so that it's in her hand, and then we'll pose it so that it looks like the, the bikini top is just in her hand. So what I have to do is I have to find the bikini top. So I'm going to double click on Milica. Just scroll down until I find the salt bikini bra. That's what this is called. So it's a bikini. And I'm going to right click and unparent it. So I'm going to unparent it. And now it's not parented to Milica. But I have to right click again and go to fit salt bikini bra 2. Click that. It, she's still selected, so I have to select this and go to None. Accept it. Bikini Top is free to move. See, if I select it, it'll move by itself. Now, it's in this position like it, she's wearing it. So what we want to do is we want to move it into a position where it looks like she's holding it. So now what I have to do is this this bikini is actually already deforce enabled. So if I ran a simulation, it would move and everything. But I want to use our weight mapping to make sure that it stays in her hand and so that it moves correctly. Now what's interesting is if I select this um, bikini top, I'm going to do the same thing I did with my my blanket. So I'm going to go to um, create, drop down to uh, new deforce modifier weight node. I'm going to uh, select that, and we can name this. Um, let's just name it bikini bikini weight node. And I'll hit accept. And when we go to the bikini, you'll see that I now have a weight node. So I'm going to select this weight node. And then I'm going to go to tools. Go down to my node weight map brush. Select it. And now you can see that it changed color. Now what is interesting about this is the way that the D-Force is going to work is they have certain areas of the clothing that moves and some areas that don't. So if I go back to this lit wireframe, you can see as I move the bikini around that some areas of the bikini are going to be blue and some are going to be red. So remember, the red moves the blue doesn't. So what I want to do is I want to make sure everything is red. Now the back of this bikini is not solid red because when it's posed on the character they don't want it to move. So I'm gonna just hold down without the alt key, no alt, 
I'm going to hold down and I'm going to change that weight mapping so that it is all red. And I'm going to do that. See, we've got this area right here in her hand. So I can make this all red too. I'm just clicking my mouse and going over it until it's red. All right, same with these areas of the tie. Okay, now what I want to do is I want to add a weight map, get rid of the deforce movement right where her hand is. And so uh, this is when I hit Alt, and then I'm just going to click and change it until it's blue. So this area of the bra of the bikini top will not move. The more I make it blue and green, the more it is frozen in position. You can see it turns gray. Okay, so now I've got this bikini top ready to go. Go back to our texture shaded and we're going to run a simulation. Now, here's the deal. I have two items deforce enabled right now. So if I hit simulate, it's gonna reset my blanket and it's gonna move with my bikini top. I don't want that to happen. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go to my plane, which is my blanket, and go to the parameters tab with your plane. Um, let's get back to our node selection tool. So I'm gonna hit my plane and under general I'm gonna go to simulation and I'm gonna turn on the freeze simulation. So this is gonna freeze our blanket in the position it's at. So I can run a simulation of the bikini top without messing with my blanket. Because I like the blanket where it is. Remember, we froze it in kind of a partial simulated um, position. So I don't want to change that. I just want to change the bikini top. So now with this freeze simulation on, our blanket won't move, our, uh, our bra will move. So I'm going to hit simulate. So now I have both things posed. And of course, what do we have to do? We have to get this situated. All right, now let's run a render. Okay, so here's our render. You know, it's not too bad. Maybe uh, I could use a little bit more lighting. It took about seven minutes to render this picture in my computer. And so I'm pretty pleased with it. I hope you learned something about our weight mapping. And um, I think Milica looks a whole lot better than a sphere and a plane that people have with their tutorials showing you. So yeah, I like to make this a little more fun, pose something that you can do with your renders. So anyway, I hope you enjoyed this. Hit the like, subscribe, and please comment on what you see, what you like, and uh, what you'd like to see in the future. Alrighty, I hope you all have a great day. Take care, and I'll see you next time. Thank you.